Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning. And thank you, Cybil and the praise and worship team for leading us on the wonderful singing of songs for God's glory and honor. How are you today? I hope and pray that everything is going well with you right now. Can you please um, look to your left and to your right and show your beautiful smile to the person beside you and greet him or her. Happy or a blessed Sunday to you. Today, um, we will continue the series about tough lessons in life. And in the second Sunday, I will be preaching about tough lessons on desire for greatness. So, by the way, last Friday, I together with the faculty team, was able to play basketball against the EBCS college students. And the good thing is that we won. Oh, praise the Lord. Wala namang sinabi yung mga college students na yan sa faculty. And here's my game statistics. Within 15 minutes, Nakalaro ako, 15 minutes playing time. I scored, nakakahiya naman sabihin, 5 points. And then, I was fouled out, meaning, 5 din yung fouls ko na nakumit. But again, we won the game. You know what? We cannot deny the fact that many of us are basketball fans, Right? Anywhere you look, uh, kahit pupunta ka sa pinakabukid na, na barangay, most remote barangay in the Philippines, you will see, iwa, basketball court. Even in the streets, yung mga kalikalya na yan, nilalagyan pa ng ring, ginawang, ginagawang basketball court. And here in the seminary, in Ebenezer, whenever the Foundation Week celebration is on, the basketball game is the most awaited event for the men living in that dorm. Uh, you know what? It is the main event for them. It's okay to lose in any competition during the Foundation Week. Wag lang sa basketball. Kasi ang post-game ng basketball sa men's dorm aabot pa ng ilang semester bago maka-move on. Ganyan ang love ng mga men natin dyan sa dorm for basketball. I think basketball should be the national sport of the Philippines. Hindi dapat sepak takraw or boxing. Kasi mas sinusuportahan pa natin ang basketball kahit kulela tayo sa mga national na competition. But you know what, brethren? In the basketball world, there's an ongoing debate about who is the GOAT or the greatest of all time. Uh, sa inyo, yung iba nagsismile na. Ay, parang pumapanig kay Jordan or kay Lebron. Sino kaya ang goat sa kanila? Lebron or Jordan? There were comparisons of statistics, leadership, era. Some would say Lebron James should be the goat kasi whenever pupunta siya sa isang team, bubuhatin at bubuhatin niya yan. Every time mapunta siya sa isang team, aabot yan ng finals. Ang iba nagsasabi din, si Jordan dapat ang GOAT kasi mas physical masyado during sa kanyang era. Tapos, naka-six rings pa siya. Hindi basta-basta. I do not know kung sino ang magiging um, tingalain or Magig- makakuha ng goat na uh, name 
O kung sino ang magiging greatest of all time. Way back then, when I was a child, I dream and I desired to be a greatest basketball player. However, kinapos sa ano eh. Alam nyo na, kinapos sa height. Pero, nakakasiko pa naman pag naglalaro ng basketball. Kaya ayun, fouled out. You know what? My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, all of us have this mindset as well to be great. Sabihin mo yung katabi mo, you want to be great? Uh, ask him, ask her that question. You know what? According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, great means an outstandingly superior or skillful person. That's good. Gustong gusto natin yan. That's a good thing. And nothing is wrong with that. If you desire to be great, be it. Greatness at one level or another is something that almost everyone aspires to. We seek to make our marks in this world and to be known for our accomplishments as an employee, as a businessman, businesswoman, as a teacher, as a parent, or as a child, as a student. We want to become great and we want to be the first. We want to be in that position that everyone, of, everyone around us will look up unto us. Gusto natin na maging great. It is so important to human beings and it is important to pursue greatness. And you know what? We give more emphasis to become great that most of human beings fall into deep depression when they see themselves unable to obtain personal greatness. Yun yung naging cons. And you know what? Church, there is a story in the Bible about Jesus' disciples who aspired to greatness, asking Jesus Christ to give them positions of honor in His kingdom. Well, if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it with me in the book of Mark 10, verses 35 to 45. And I'll be reading in the NESB version. James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant that we may sit one on your right and one on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which, with which I am baptized? They said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you shall drink and you shall be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. But to sit on my right and unto my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Hearing this, the ten began to feel indignant with James and John, calling them to himself. Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your, what? Servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The good Lord already blessed the reading of his word. In this particular passage, James and John, the two disciples of Jesus, approached him with a request that uncovered 
a common human desire, the longing for greatness. But as we shall see, their understanding of greatness was at odds with the kingdom of God. So what were they longing for? James and John came to Jesus seeking positions of honor and authority in his kingdom. And their request is rooted, was rooted in a worldly understanding of greatness. One that is defined by power, prestige, and status. But Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, he saw beyond their earthly ambitions. So Jesus Christ responded to James and John with a profound teaching on true greatness. He turned their expectations upside down by revealing that in the kingdom of God, greatness is not attained through the pursuit of power, but through service. By the way, Church, I would like to tell you that Jesus Christ never condemned James and John for their desire to be great. He did not rebuke them. Neither did he tell the, the other disciples that James and John were wrong to pursue greatness. And this reveals that greatness in itself is not a bad thing. Indeed, we should aspire to greatness. And the pursuit of greatness is not inherently wrong. And we sin by not understanding or pursuing what Jesus defines as true greatness. However, brethren, the citizens of Christ's kingdom do not seek greatness to achieve power over others. That is what citizens of the worldly kingdoms do. Instead, Christians pursue greatness to better serve others and to meet the needs of other believers. Not the way of the world. It's way opposite than what we think of greatness. But the greatness in the kingdom of God is different from what we are practicing today or what we know about earthly greatness. Greatness in the kingdom of God comes by submitting ourselves to one another and by looking for what we can give and not for what we can gain. One particular passage in the Bible that encourages us, sabi pa, give and you will receive. How can you receive if you keep on giving? Ironic, right? But that's the way of God. Greatness in the kingdom of God comes by submitting ourselves to one another and by looking for what we can give and not for what we can gain. And Jesus Christ himself demonstrated this truth throughout his ministry here on earth. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, washed the feet of his disciples, and Christ himself provides the supreme example of what it means to serve others. His willingness to pay the ransom to free us from our sins is the greatest act of service in all of history. Jesus Christ had the right to refuse to come to our rescue. He could have used his power and glory to advance himself at the expense of others. But he did not do that. He humbled himself instead and paid the price of justice that God demanded for us to be freed from our sins. But pastor, you want us to live like Christ. We cannot die for someone. We cannot atone the sin of someone. Yes, 
Though we cannot atone for sin, we can serve others according to our distinct callings. God, the Holy Spirit, has bestowed and showered you with a special spiritual gifts that you have in you right now. And you know what? You can use that by serving one another. And in doing, we will find greatness. So Jesus made it clear that greatness in his kingdom is achieved by becoming a servant of all. Wow. Greatness in his kingdom is achieved by becoming a servant of all. John Calvin commented, Let the only greatness, eminence, and rank which you desire be to submit to your brethren and let this be your primacy to be the servants of all. It's so hard. It's difficult. Ayaw natin na maging alipin. We are trained and wired to become self-centered, to become arrogant, to become proud. Because we desire to be great in this world. But the greatness in the kingdom of God is different. If you want to be the first among everybody, here's the cost. You need to be the servants of all. And the question for us today, are you willing to live a life like Christ? Are you willing to become a servant of all? Jesus emphasized that true greatness involves humility, selflessness, and sacrificial love. It is putting the needs of others before our desires and ambitions. So I do really commend those brothers and sisters of ours who sacrificially devote themselves and commit themselves in different ministries. It requires their time. It requires their means. It requires their finances. It requires their being. And yet, they serve like the Lord Jesus Christ. Palakbakan po natin ang mga individual na ganun. And if you think, you are like that. I do really appreciate you. Jesus is the ultimate example of humility and service. And He keeps on calling you and I to follow in His footsteps. He calls us to embrace a life of servanthood, to use our gifts and talents not for our own glory but for the benefit of others. As we imitate Christ in serving others, the good thing is that you reflect the very nature of God and participate in the advancement of His kingdom. And I tell you, if you keep on living, if you keep living a life just like the Lord Jesus Christ, who is full of humility, selfless, who has a sacrificial love to all people, then I know for sure the reward that awaits you in heaven is beyond your imagination. Amen? Despite the radical nature of Jesus' teaching, He offers a promise of reward to those who embrace it. He assures us that those who humble themselves and become servants will be exalted 
in the kingdom of God. Our true reward lies not in earthly compliments, but in the eternal blessings of God's kingdom. Aren't you excited that one day in heaven, the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings will declare in front of you, among many witnesses, among the saints, he will declare, well done, my good and faithful servant. And he will turn over that crown of glory to you. Aren't you excited with that, brothers and sisters in the Lord? That greatness can be attained through humility and by serving one another. So my beloved is AC. Let us listen to the words of Jesus and embrace the course to true greatness. Let us pursue this greatness and follow the example of our servant king. One of the core values of Ebenezer Bible College and Seminary, the letter S, serve as servant leadership. It encourages the students as well as the faculty to have this kind of heart. Is servant leadership, just like the Lord Jesus. My prayer is that all of us, as a church, as an individual, we will pursue greatness and follow the example of our servant king. As we serve others with humility and love, may we experience the fullness of God's kingdom and receive the eternal reward, that greatness in His presence. In His presence. But you know what? There's the problem. And the main problem with us not living a life of servanthood is us. The main problem with not living a life of servanthood is us. Why? Because we are selfish and egocentric. We don't want to sacrifice. We are entitled. We are proud, boastful, arrogant. We are sinners. And we are wired and encouraged to do things for our benefit alone. Indeed, we want to be served and hate to serve. So today, I would like us to ask ourselves the question, in what ways can I serve Jesus today? I encourage everyone to please bow down your heads. Ask the question, in what ways can I serve Jesus today? You can serve Jesus by being kind to everyone. You can serve Jesus by being patient when you drive. You can serve Jesus by being gentle with your words and not rude or angry. You can serve Jesus by rendering time in different ministries. And there are a lot more opportunities for you to be great in God's kingdom. You can give to the poor. You can live a holy life. Greatness in the kingdom of God is not about worldly status. Greatness in the kingdom of God is not about power. Greatness in the kingdom of God is not self-centered.
as the Lord Jesus Christ declared in the book of Mark, by losing, you are gaining. You may lose your possession and your positions here on earth, but there's a great reward for you awaiting in heaven. Therefore, my brethren, a serving is an identity, not just an acti activity. Serving is an identity, not just an activity. People will know that you belong to Christ if you serve like Him. Even pagans will know that you have, that you are serving the one true God if you are serving with humility, if you are serving without any hidden motives, and do not worry, because Jesus is our perfect example of serving. Mark ten forty five it says he came to serve and gave himself as a ransom to many. You may desire for greatness. Yes, that's good. But it should be the greatness that someday we will enjoy with Him in heaven. Live a life like Him. Serve like Him. And God is opening up many opportunities for you on a daily basis. That is why you can serve every day. As you go home later, I want you to keep on reflecting. In what ways can I serve Jesus? Keep on asking yourself, in what ways can I serve Jesus? Am I really serving God with humility, with sacrificial love? Do I have the heart of a servant leader? Or am I just serving for the sake of requirement? I am just serving. Wala nang choice. In the previous chapter of Mark, in Mark 8, 36, it says, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? Nothing. So today I want you to think of the things that matters to God. What is it that matters to Him? Your service to the people around you, even to strangers, matters to God. Your selfless act of obedience matters to God. Your sacrificial love matters to God. So think of the things that matters to Him and make them your priorities in living this life because we only have one life that will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last our good Lord we thank you for such a wonderful reminding may it be oh God that we will see things with eternal perspective. In your lens, we will see these things. And we are after for that heavenly reward. Not just the compliments from this fallen world. Allow your children to serve like you. 
to pursue greatness for your kingdom. We are so excited, Lord, because we know that every day in our lives is an opportunity to serve you by serving the people around us. And thank you, O God, for you have given us the perfect example. That is your Son, Jesus. May it be that you will be glorified and be magnified in everything that we will be doing while we are still alive here on earth. Glory, honor, and power belongs to you alone. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone will declare, Amen and Amen. May the good Lord bless you.